We have spent some time learning about culture and critical thinking, but how can we assess our students' work in these areas? One way to assess this is through the use of rubrics. In this video, we will discuss what rubrics are, how to create them, and how to use them to assess our students. Some assignments are easy to assess. When there is one right answer, grading can be fairly simple. For complex tasks, we need to consider several factors. This is when a rubric can be very useful. A rubric specifies first what is being evaluated. These are the evaluation criteria. For example, when grading an essay, a teacher might choose to focus on the organization of the essay, the content, and the grammar and mechanics. Next, a rubric describes the different levels of mastery. In this rubric, the teacher can describe the essay's organization as inadequate, adequate, good, or very good. Each area will be assessed like this. In addition to evaluating the organization, the teacher will also assess the content and the grammar and mechanics. How does the teacher decide which level to choose? Quality definitions for each level of each skill are included in the rubric. The teacher chooses the level whose description best describes the student's work in that area. In this case, the teacher decides that the descriptions for the level good fit the student's work in terms of organization and content. For grammar and mechanics, the definition for adequate is the best description of the quality of the student's work. Rubrics are very helpful for the teaching learning process. For teachers, a rubric is not only a tool for assessing students, it also helps the teacher clarify learning objectives. This helps the teacher plan activities better. For learners, rubrics communicate what is expected of them. Now that we have talked about the basics of rubrics, let's look at how we can make one. In this section, we will look at some examples of rubrics for critical thinking and talk about ways to create your own rubrics. Step one, list the evaluation criteria that you will be assessing. This rubric is for evaluating critical thinking and this teacher has chosen to evaluate listening, reflecting, and explaining. Next, decide how you will rate these criteria. For this, you will need to identify the levels of mastery. If you want three levels, you can label them. In this first example, the levels of mastery are developing, accomplished, and exemplary. This example uses needs improvement, good, and excellent as levels of mastery. These words are a little bit simpler and perhaps better suited for younger learners or for beginners. This last example includes levels of mastery related to meeting criteria expectations. When considering what to write for levels of mastery, it's important to think about who your students are and the purpose of the rubric. Then you must write quality descriptions for each level as it relates to each evaluation criteria. The definitions need to be about observable and measurable behavior. This will help distinguish between the levels and help both learner and educator accurately and fairly assess progress. For example, thinks critically is too vague. The level of detail you include depends on your students and context. Here is a completed and simple example of a rubric for creative critical thinking. This rubric was designed for young learners. As you can see, the criteria are written in short sentences using simple language. They are also written as I statements, which help the learner think about themselves. This rubric also uses images to show levels of mastery. The images could be smiley faces, stars, 
or anything that might be relevant to students. As long as it is a symbol, they will understand. Here are the references used for this topic. And here is some additional reading to learn more about rubrics.